Section number 48 is entitled Negative Exponents. For example, if you have 2 to the negative 3, of course that's the same as 1 times 2 to the negative 3. And for the record, the power of the 1 is 1. If things are being multiplied or divided, you can move them from the numerator to the denominator, or from the denominator to the numerator, whenever you like, as often as you like. But you have to change the sign of the power. The 1 to the 1, which is the same as just 1. The exponent is positive. I'll leave it where it is. So my goal is to write this without any negative exponents. The 2 to the negative 3, the exponent is clearly negative. So I want to move it. It's in the numerator. I move it to the denominator. Okay, that is all this writing to say this is in top, put it in the bottom. But there's always a 1. You can't say, well, nothing's on the top. There's always a 1. If you have 3 to the negative 2 over 5 to the negative 4, final answer, the instructions are to evaluate. Figure out how much that is. Well, the 3 to the negative 2 is on top. I put it on the bottom, and the sign is now positive. I know it's 3 to the second, it's 9. The 5 to the negative 2 in the bottom, excuse me, 5 to the negative 4 in the bottom, I put it on top, it's 5 to the 4. I actually know what 5 times 5, 4 times is. That's 25 times, and that's 25. I know what 25 times 25 is. It's 625. And there's your answer. You move from top to bottom, bottom to top, and the sign of the power changes. You don't need to move everything. Only move the factors that have negative exponents. If you have this, Go factor by factor. 2 to the 3, it stays where it is. 3 to the negative 2, it has a negative exponent. I cross the division line. It was on top, it's now on the bottom. The 5 squared, it stays where it is. Not in the first position, that doesn't matter, but in the denominator. It stays in the denominator. It is now the second factor in the bottom, but that doesn't matter. And the 4 to the negative 2, has a negative exponent, I move it to the top. If you want to evaluate this, 2 cubed is 8, 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25, 25, and 8 times 16, I guess, is 128, and 9 times 25 is 225. And there's your answer. There's your answer. I want to point out that you have 5 times 3 squared. This is not 15 squared. There's a brick wall that separates what you're multiplying. 5 times 3 squared. 5, of course, is 5. And 3 squared, of course, is 9. And 5 times 9, that's 45. It is not 15 squared, which is 225. So, a good exercise. Now, final answers should, unless otherwise stated, final answers really should not have negative exponents. So, it's a good exercise to learn how to write things without negative exponents. So, the instructions here are to write 
without negative exponents. I'm going to do a few of these. 6 times x to the negative 2 times y to the negative 4 times z to the 5th divided by 9 times a to the negative 2 b cubed c saved to the 4th power. Now, the numbers are actually the pain here. You actually have to know something about math. You have to know how to do division. You have to know that 3 goes into both of these numbers 2 and 3 times. So there's the 2 and the 3. The lettuce, piece of cake. x to the negative 2. It's a negative exponent. I cross the division line. It's in the top. I put it in the bottom. The so y to the negative 4. I have a negative exponent. I cross the division line. I write y to the 4. Cross the division line means you go from top to bottom or bottom to top. z to the fifth. It has a positive exponent. It stays where it is in the top. The 3 I already wrote down. A to the negative 2, it's in the bottom. It has a negative exponent. I move it on top. B cubed has a positive exponent. It stays where it is. C to the 4th, positive exponent, stays where it is. You just move the pieces if they have negative exponents. And then when you do move it, you change the sign. New problem. C to the fifth, and this time we'll divide by 12. Well, the numbers. 4 goes into both of those numbers 2 and 3 times. We don't always get 2 over 3, but this time, these two times we did. 8 is a negative 3. It stays just, 8 is the 3, excuse me, it stays just where it is. B to the negative 4, negative 4, we move it. C to the 5, it stays where it is. The 3 we dealt with, x cubed, stays where it is. Y to the negative 2, it gets moved to the top, is 1 squared. Z to the 6, stays just where it is. Minus some silly, silly error. Here is the answer. Okay, the numbers were harder. We actually had to know that 4 went into 8. And 2 times. And 4 went into 12 3 times. When it came to the letters, all we had to do was recognize whether it had a minus sign or not. Okay, you can teach somebody who knows no math at all, none at all, how to move the letters. Okay, you don't have to have any understanding of math to move those letters. To know 8 over 12 was 2 thirds, you have to know some math. And since math is hard, when you have a problem that doesn't involve math, it's easier. Okay. Now, the problems we've just done, when it came to the bases, I've only given you, the base only showed up one time. Well, what if the bases show up more than one time? Suppose you have that and you divide it by x to the negative 4, z to the negative 8, y to the negative 2. What you must remember is, regardless of whether the numbers are positive or negative or whatever, or zero, you have, if you do the larger number minus the smaller number, it will always be positive. I don't care what the two numbers are, they're both negative, they're both positive, one is negative, one is positive. If one is larger than the other, and you do the larger number minus the smaller number, you will always, always get positive. And if you subtract 
two numbers and the first one is smaller than the second, you will get negative. For example, negative 2 minus negative 3. Between these two numbers, that's the smaller number. That's the larger number. I know it is. Numbers to the left on the number line are always smaller. Here's 0, eventually negative 3, eventually negative 8. This number is smaller than that number. This will be a negative number. In this case, negative 5. But nonetheless, negative. If I did negative 3, take away negative 8. This number is larger than this number. Larger minus smaller is always positive. Always. Larger minus smaller is always positive. And if we do the top power... Oh, okay, so now, to remind you, if you have, say, x to some number, and you divide it, well, say, x to the 10, and you divide it by x cubed, if you do 10 minus 3, 7, that goes on the top. But now, if for one reason or another, you wanted to do the bottom power minus the top power, you wanted to do 3 minus 10, why that's negative 7. But since you're doing the bottom power first, you're saying 3 first, 3 minus 10, the x goes on the bottom. And 3 minus 10 is negative 7, and there's always a 1 for the top. And there's the one. If you do the bottom minus the top, you put the base in the bottom. If you do the top minus the bottom, you put the base in the top. Let's see what on earth I'm talking about. Now, instructions are the same, write with positive exponents only, or write without negative exponents. These bases are the same. The larger power is on the top. So I put x on the top. And I use the larger power minus the smaller power. And I'll always get a positive answer. When it comes to the y's, the larger power is on the bottom. Negative 2 is larger than negative 4. So I do the larger power minus the smaller power, and that will give me 2. And since the larger power came from the bottom, I put y in the bottom, y squared. When it comes to these, the larger power is on top. Negative 6 is bigger than negative 8. On a number line, here's 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, eventually negative 6, eventually negative 8. This number is larger and that's smaller. How do I know that? The number to the right is always larger. And since I want a positive exponent, I want to do larger minus smaller. Because if I do smaller minus larger, I won't get a positive. So since the larger power is on top, Z goes on the top, and the larger number minus the smaller number is in this case, 2, the z squared. There's the answer. Of course, if it happened, and it didn't, if it happened that the y was y to the 7 is on the top, if it did happen, all I'm going to say is that you didn't need the division line. Okay. But since we did have something in the bottom, uh, we didn't need the division line. And if I'm not mistaken, it was y squared. Now, let us look at this problem and just want to make a little point about it and then we'll move on and do some more. Suppose you have this one. Suppose you have x to the negative 2, y cubed, z to the negative 4, and on the bottom you have x squared, y to the 5th, z to the negative 2. Well, when it comes to these faces are the same, when it comes to the x's, the largest power is on the bottom. The x goes in the bottom. And you subtract. When you subtract, you find out how much bigger one number is than another. These numbers are four apart on a number one. That is negative, excuse 
excuse me, 4, 2, 2, 2 is 4 bigger than negative 2. That is, if you subtract, you'll get 4. When it comes to the y's, the powers of the y's, the larger one is on the bottom. It's 2 bigger. How much bigger is this number than that number? 2. When it comes to the z's, the powers of the z's, the power in the bottom, negative 2, is bigger than negative 4. So, z goes on the bottom. How much bigger are those numbers? How much bigger is negative 2 than negative 4? You know, when somebody asks you how much bigger, they're asking how far apart on the number line are they? They're 2 apart. So, z squared. And the point I want to make is, if you just put this, this is not the answer. What if this whole bottom was 7? Well, what would blank space over 7 mean? What would blank space over 7 or blank space over x to the 4th, y squared, z squared be? The answer is it would mean nothing. That doesn't mean there's no answer. There's a 1 on top. There's a 1 on top. Where did the 1 come from? Well, if you must know, it came from right there. After all, x, well, let me go to the top. After all, x squared, oh, that was an old, a different problem. After all, the numerator, x to the negative 2, y cubed, z to the negative 4, is equal to 1 times x to the negative 2, z to the 3, y to the 3, excuse me, z to the negative 4. And the power of the 1 is 1. That is, it stays just where it is. So, if there's nothing on top, it's a 1. If there's nothing on the bottom, here it's a 1, but you don't even need it then. Just erase the bottom. There is no denominator. Erase the division line. positive 
is in the top. Now, maybe we'll do just one more problem. What if we have the same bases on the top and we also have some of it on the bottom? That is, we have more than one base of A on top and maybe we have one or more of base A on the bottom. We have A cubed, B to the negative 4, A to the negative 2, B to the 6, C to the 9, divided by A to the negative 1, B to the 4, C to the negative 2, and also C to the 6. Well, first, you should clean up top to bottom, with one exception. If you had B to the 4th on top, and D to the fourth on the bottom, I would jump on crossing that out. Even if I had other D's on top and other D's on the bottom. It's obvious that D to the four over D to the fourth cancels out. Okay, let us clean up their top. The bases I see are A, B, I already said A and B, so A, B, C. I dealt with that D, but there's another D. And on the bottom, I have C's, I have A's, I have B's, I already wrote C, and I need D's. Let us clean up the top. Those are the same bases, and when I add the exponents, I'll be adding the numerators. Remember, A cubed times A to the 7 is A to the 10. We talked about that in an earlier video. So it's A to the 1. When it comes to B's, I have negative 4 and 6 as the power. You add them, you get 2. When it comes to C's, I just have C to the 9th, and D's are just 3. Now I go to the bottom. I have C's. Powers are 6 and negative 2. You add them, you get 4. A's, just 1 power, negative 1. B, just one power. D, only one power survived. Okay, now and only now can I go from top to bottom. Those are the same bases. The larger power is in the top and it is two bigger. From negative one to one, well, zero, one. It's two apart. When it comes to B's, I just have, I have two on top and four in the bottom. The larger power is in the bottom and the larger power is two more than the smaller power. Four is really two more than two. And if you want to compute four minus two, fine, you're going to get two. When it comes to C's, the larger power is on the top. And nine is five more than four. After all, 9 minus 4 is 5. When it comes to D's, 3 is bigger than 2. I looked at the powers. And the larger power, 3, is on top. So I put D on the top. And 3 is 1 bigger than 2. You don't need to put that 1 down. And there is your final answer. Clean up the top. Clean up the bottom. And then simplify top to bottom. But of course, if you have exactly something on top and on the bottom, exactly the same, you can cross them right out. That you can do. If you saw it, if you didn't see it, it'll be dealt with later. Okay, that completes the section on negative exponents.